This is our friend's very outdated house, and they hired us to completely transform their main living spaces. But what they don't know is that we have some huge surprises up our sleeve. So in this video, we're showing you every step of our 90-day journey as we transform their kitchen, living room, dining room, and pantry. This extreme home makeover was one of the biggest and most meaningful projects that we've ever been a part of. <laughs> Okay, maybe I do shock well. So buckle up and join us for this incredible DIY adventure. The first day of any project is always exciting, but this one didn't exactly start off bright and sunny. What a day to start. <laughs> All right, so it is officially day one in our friend's house and we are ready to get started with demo. We're a little bit wet, it is pouring outside. So we've got wet shoes, a car full of tools, and we are ready to get started. <laughs> We decided to pull out this narrow cabinet to the right of the kitchen window because honestly it's a little bit strange how it comes all the way to the window edge and since I'll be removing the upper cabinets on the other side of the window, I really felt like this would give a more balanced look overall and honestly just look a lot better. Next we took down the upper cabinets on the other side of the window and this is where we'll be adding open shelves later on. Most of these upper cabinets were relatively straightforward to pull down without damaging them at all but unfortunately this tall pantry cabinet was already falling apart a bit and was wedged in so tightly that by the time we got it all the way out it was literally falling to pieces. Wow look at it! It's looking so different it's crazy what just like moving a few cabinets does. I don't know if you can tell on the camera it feels so much more like open this feels like a bigger this is gonna feel like a big kitchen this is so cool so demo is well underway but let's hit pause for a second and back up because even though demo day represents the first day of work in the home it is definitely not day one of this project it's hard to convey on camera in a short video how much time andrea has really spent talking with the homeowners looking for the perfect paint colors countertops buying materials creating mood boards and planning 101 other details around this project so many compliments to andrea for preparing well and we just wanted you to see this side of the project before you go start blowing up a kitchen with without a plan. Now let's get back into demo. Once we had all of the cabinets out, I started working on removing the old backsplash and countertops. so strong. When it came time to remove the sink, I had to have Dean put down the camera and come and help because this cast iron sink was so insanely heavy. That's why you wear glasses and closed toed shoes. Next, I pulled out the microwave and the little cabinet above it because I will be building a custom vent hood here and pulling these out now makes it easier to get this backsplash out. could pull this backsplash out I needed to remove these outlets and so I gave Dean a voltage tester while I went outside to figure out which switch turned off the power to these outlets. That was it right there you got it. Okay. <sighs> With the outlets removed I could take off the rest of this backsplash and the countertops. <laughs> I'm gonna make some people mad and I'm gonna break this cabinet, but I can't get it out. And my disclaimer is, it is really water damaged already. It's moldy. That's the whole reason we're replacing it. 
It's a big pain in the rear end. Cheers. <laughs> Go get your dog food. After lunch, we started working on installing the replacement cabinet for the sink. I started by cutting a hole in the side that all of the dishwasher lines could go through. We had our friends pick up this cabinet at our local Home Depot in a style that matched their current cabinets. And we will be painting all of these cabinets the same color, so in the end, they're all going to look nice and cohesive. Like, their kitchen has more space than our kitchen. Like, this is crazy. I'm just saying, like, this is a good, this is a good size. Like, they'll have all this prep space that they've gained, and then, like, with this being bigger, that is nuts. It's another beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> we started out the next day by loading up all the tools I would need to build a new custom island in Vent Hood. And when you're loading tools that are this heavy, it's good to stretch the old back first. I also had some leftover plywood from our closet build that will work perfectly for the new vent hood. It turned out to be a really foggy day, but once we got to their house, we unloaded all of our tools and then jumped right back in the car. So we unloaded all of our tools, had to make some room. We're gonna go to a local building supply store, try and get some cabinets to put the island together today. Hopefully they have what we need. So they didn't have what we need, but I've checked online and I think Home Depot has all of the size cabinets that we need. Hopefully they do or we're in trouble. <laughs> gotten nearly all of the supplies but there was one cabinet just out of reach and it seemed like they were a bit short staffed so we did a bit of problem solving of our own to get that cabinet down yep that's right we're in business Since I already knew the height of the kitchen island, I went ahead and had them rip down a piece of plywood that I was going to use for the side panels so that we can more easily fit it in our van because it was already going to be quite a tight fit. Hey, who needs a truck when you got a minivan? I mean, we got a full island in here. This bad boy. We started out by removing this old granite countertop, which proved to be a little trickier than I thought because it is so insanely heavy. What? Oh! Woo! I think I got strong legs. It's not a trampoline, babe. Right side down? Yeah. We put this on a scale, it actually weighs 1,072 pounds. I think it might. Oh, it's That's... incredible. Oh gosh! But before Andrea starts building this island, why don't we introduce you to our friends whose house we're working in. This is William and Andrea, and we go way back. I mean, way back. And we've basically raised our families together over the years. William works at a local hospital in the HR department, and Andrea is a school teacher. Beyond being really appreciative for what these guys each do in their day jobs, they're also some of the most generous people we know when it comes to opening up their home to other people. And we've been plotting for a while now about how to help them do some of the renovations that they've been dreaming of and really help their budget go a long, long way. So here's a little sneak peek of what we're planning to do in the kitchen. For this space, we'll be reconfiguring the cabinets a bit, removing a few of them, adding some of them, and of course, adding a new custom island that you're gonna get to see us build today. This will give them a lot more of that much needed countertop prep space, as well as make their kitchen feel almost twice as big. I plan to paint all of the cabinets this beautiful dark, blue gray color we'll be adding white quartz countertops in this awesome budget-friendly brick backsplash okay it's island building day and we just got hopefully all of the materials unless i forgot something we have rain forecasted in the next few hours so we are like praying and fingers crossed that it holds out and we can actually get this built step one is going to be removing this thing which 
is somehow bolted down into the concrete. We're gonna find those screws and hopefully we can get it out without damaging these cabinets because they want to reuse these out in the garage. There ended up being a few screws near the bottom of the island that were attaching it to these two by fours that were nailed down into the concrete. And once we found and removed those, it was much easier to get all of this removed. After a quick cleanup, we were ready to start bringing in the cabinets for the new island. All right, let's bring in those cabinets. Woo! That's it. Not quite. We're gonna have a bit of an island overhang. These cabinets are gonna be built up and I want my countertop on this side to line up. You got it, girl. I sound really confident. It's gonna look awesome. I started the build by making a base for the cabinets on the back side of the island to sit up on. Since those cabinets are actually upper cabinets, they are a few inches shorter than my base cabinets on the other side. To build the base, I measured the extra height that I would need and then ripped down some 2x6 boards to the exact height. What do you think? Is it looking pretty good? All right, so I finished up the base to hold up the backside of the island cabinets and I'm, I've drilled some pilot holes and I'm gonna drill into the concrete a bit and then use these masonry screws to then anchor this side down into the concrete just so we have a really solid base and then we have something to screw these cabinets into and I'll also attach this to that post. <laughs> Once the base was finished and in place, I was able to start setting and attaching the cabinets. I used a clamp to hold my cabinets perfectly together while I drilled a small pilot hole and then used two inch wood screws to attach the face frames together. You're an angry elf. From here, I basically repeated the same process and used wood shims in my level to make sure everything was nice and straight and level before attaching the cabinets together. Okay, so I'm having to improvise a little bit on how we're building the side panels for this because I really want to make sure we have enough room this way once I add posts under the overhang to be able to fit at least three bar stools. So I'm sending Dean on a mission to Lowe's to get a couple more four by fours. And anytime Andrea sends me on a mission, I make it my mission to do it as fast as possible. Once Dean got back, I got ready to plane down the boards and it was so incredibly cold outside. Oh my gosh. I'm not usually a baby with the cold. This is freezing. What's the wind chill right now? I can't get the wind chill for the entire- It's too cold. <laughs> I'm not trying to be dramatic. I used an old electric planer that I had on hand and this tool simply shaves a little bit off of each side of the board to give me a smoother finish and a more square edge. <laughs> Next, I cut each post to the correct height. After bringing the posts inside, I used some wood filler to fill some of the larger knots and any cracks that I saw just to have a really smooth finish once these were painted. While I waited for the wood filler to dry, I started working on the side panels of the island. For that, I cut down this half-inch plywood, some 1x3s, and assembled everything using pocket holes and wood glue. I finished assembling the side panels, the wood filler was dry, and I was able to sand down each of the posts for a nice smooth finish. Once the 
posts were ready, I again used pocket holes and wood glue to attach them to the side panels. Finally, I was able to attach the panels and posts to the island itself and it really started to give it a finished feel. Are you a pro? <laughs> Almost. Where the island met this large floor to ceiling post, there wasn't enough room to add another four x four. And so I ended up having to get a little bit creative and used a couple of one by threes to make a smaller post for that corner. What are you doing? The last step was to cut some more 1x3s that would attach to the posts on the overhang side of the island. This island is pretty much complete. The only thing left to do will be to paint it all the same color and then add plywood before the countertops are installed. And I just love how this island is coming together. All right, so it's a new day. We have the island completely finished. I'm gonna work on doing the new custom vent hood today. If we have time, we may even get to some paint prep so we can really knock that out later this week. We got to get the project manager in here. Project manager, come on. Hey, we got work to do today. We got work to do today, man. It's a big day, man. It's a big day. For the vent hood, I'm going to keep it really simple rather than trying to match these raised panel doors. And so it's going to be basically a clean box come out about 17 inches. I have plenty of leftover plywood from our closet build that we just did. And so we'll be using most of that and it'll get painted the same color as all of these uppers whenever we paint in a couple weeks. Once I knew the measurements of the new vent hood, I was able to start cutting down this three quarter inch plywood that I had on hand. I built the vent hood to be about 33 inches wide, 17 inches deep, and 30 inches tall. Next, I measured and cut the hole for the vent hood insert. Once I was sure that the vent hood insert fit, I assembled everything using pocket holes and wig glue. And finally, I sanded the entire thing using 220 grit sandpaper. Before Andrea was ready to install this vent hood, it was time to take a well-deserved lunch break. Honey, I'm home. After lunch, I got Dean's help and we attached the vent hood to the wall by screwing it into the steps. Nice work. Bring it in. So the vent hood is just about finished. I realized that their previous setup didn't have a duct for a vent and so we're gonna have to get an AC guy to add that. So that's done for today. We'll worry about that next time we come. We're gonna work on attaching these base cabinets that we added. They're not actually screwed in yet. The sink cabinet is not attached yet. So we'll do this one first and then work our way down to this one. To attach the cabinets, I clamped them in place, drilled a small pilot hole and then screwed the face frames together. Yes. Okay. That's it. That's it right there. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh. 
Yeah. All right, so before I can attach this cabinet, I'm gonna go ahead and move this plug. We have an electrician that's going to bump this up here, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. We flip the breaker, the power's off. I'll pull that so I can get this installed and then let him actually install it up here. All right, since we ended up replacing the sink cabinet, the sizes of them are just slightly different and that happens. It can be a little bit tricky to mix and match like that, but I've brainstormed, I've got the opinion of a couple other friends of mine, and I think the best option is gonna be to rip a board down and add some length to the bottom of this one. There's just, there's not enough on this to try and cut some of that off, and so that's what I'm gonna do. Take it a hair and then again. Dang. Alright, perfect. Once I had these boards cut to the right size, I applied some wood glue, clamped it in place, drilled a small pilot hole, and then held it together with a wood screw. it as far as modifying the cabinets goes we have our new cabinets installed I've put those little extra pieces in the bottom and it's already looking better even though it's all different colors the island is finished except we'll be adding plywood later before countertops go in just because of the kind of countertops we're doing and the thickness of them you, just, you have to actually build it up a little bit and we've got the vent hood in it just needs the cover nailed on once we get that plug cord attached and that is really it as far as cabinetry goes. Next step will be to pull all the doors and drawers off, get everything really clean, and then we are ready to start painting it all. We started off paint day by loading up all of our supplies. This is incredible. Oh. This is Dean reporting to you live. We're getting ready for paint day number one. This should be a very exciting day and a very messy day, but let's get started, shall we? After everything was loaded up, we were ready to drive to our friend's house and get to painting. But let's back up a minute because even though today is day one of painting, this process started a few weeks ago. Before we even started demo, I was going to every paint store in town and grabbing every swatch of navy blue paint I could find so we could find the perfect color. And I just want to note here that this was not a one day decision. This was something she looked at for weeks. In the end, I landed on the color Chimney by Bear Paint because it had just the perfect amount of dark gray with a subtle touch of navy and it fit perfectly with my overall design plan. After deciding on the color, we picked up all of our paint and supplies ahead of time, which included paper, painter's tape, bin primer, painter's tripods, Bondo, a new paint suit, a large canvas drop cloth, several plastic drop cloths, and of course, a few essentials. It's paint week finally, and I have just a few prep things left to do before we start masking everything off, laying all the cabinets and drawers out because we're gonna paint all of it in their living room. The first and possibly the most important step is cleaning the cabinets. I sprayed on a generous amount of crud cutter and then used warm water and microfiber cloths to thoroughly scrub everything. This step is so important because no matter how awesome your primer is, it's not going to bond to a dirty surface. Once the cabinets were dry, I was ready to start masking off all of the openings. Now, I am masking everything off because I will be using a paint sprayer, but if you are brushing or rolling by hand, this step isn't necessary. When masking off cabinets, I like to use plastic for all of the larger openings and paper for the drawer openings, and I found that it works best if I apply tape to the inside of the cabinet face and then cut a piece of plastic that has the tape already attached to size. Once everything was masked off, I grabbed Dean and we spread out the large canvas and started laying out our doors and drawers. I gave 
gave all of the drawers a thorough cleaning while Dean followed behind and propped them up on these painter's tripods. This is actually the first time that I've used these little tripods and I can say that they are 100% worth it and so much better than any other method I've used to prop my cabinets up. And I know a lot of people out there like to spray their cabinets hanging to save space, but I always prefer to spray mine laying down because I have zero chance of having sags or drips and just get a nice, perfect, smooth, even finish every time. After cleaning and getting all of the doors set up on the painter's tripods, I went ahead and wrapped the drawers with painter's plastic and tape. And then I masked off the doorways that led to their dining space and bedrooms to keep the paint dust and smells contained. Since I was going to be spraying in the living room, I went ahead and masked off the fireplace too, just to be safe. So the video makes this whole prep process look a lot faster than it actually is, but in reality, this whole paint prep time is about 75% of the work. But once all that prep work was finally finished, I was ready to get on my paint suit and start painting. You ready, Vader? Yo, bro. I started by priming everything with my favorite Ben Shellac primer. I decided to spray the primer with my HVLP gun and air compressor because it is much easier to clean this shellac primer out of than my airless sprayer. Yo! <laughs> it like keeps going over my eyes. Once I finished spraying the cabinet boxes, I moved on to spraying the doors and the drawer fronts. Once the primer had dried, I switched over to using my airless paint sprayer and started spraying on this beautiful dark blue paint. I ended up going with Bear's Alcat Enamel Paint in the color Chimney. Sherwin Williams and Benjamin Moore both have Alcat Enamel paints that I've used and like as well, and to be honest, they all have their pros and cons, but they have a really similar performance in the end. Spraying this first coat of color on is always so exciting because it feels like the first step in really getting to see the vision come to life. And I just want to go ahead and make a quick side note here that even though you see me using a paint sprayer, you can totally do this using a brush and a foam roller. You would follow the same basic process that you see in this video, and I would recommend adding a product like Floatrol that extends the dry time of your paint and helps it to level even more. If you're spraying vertical surfaces, it's a good idea to go back and check for drips shortly after you've sprayed and keep that paintbrush on hand because even though I was spraying carefully, I did end up with a couple of drips I had to take care of. Oh, so good. The next day, I went back by myself to flip all of the doors over, paint that side, and get coats two and three on all of the cabinet boxes. Okay camera fell. Another amateur move. I don't have a phone stand with me. <laughs> I flipped all the doors over. I got the first coat on the front and I did several coats on the back. I already had both sides primed, but I'm painting the fronts last so that if any of them end up sticking to the little stands I have them on, it's not, a, it's not as big of a deal if you have to touch up the insides of your doors. You always want to paint the fronts last, but look at that. And you can't beat painting your drawers and doors flat on the ground so you don't have any drips and you get a perfectly smooth finish. It's looking so good. Okay, so I finished all of the cabinet painting yesterday. It's the next day, we gave it a full day to dry. We're gonna start taking plastic off. I'm just kind of double checking, making sure I don't need any touch up, but I haven't seen anything yet. I decided I'm gonna try and go ahead and put the doors on just to get them out of the way, but you really wanna be careful, especially this first week and really even 30 days for that paint to fully cure and fully harden before you use your cabinets regularly. Project manager, what do you think about the uh, paint job? Huh? Oh, what's gone wrong? Annie, you got some tape on your leg. So oh, it's kind of pitiful. Here, there you go. You're free, man. You're free. Look at that finish. Are you like a pro or something? Not quite. It's pretty nice. Pulling all of 
the masking off always feels a bit like Christmas to me. I think because such a huge part of the project is done and I'm really starting to get to see it come together. And I'm pretty sure I stopped every five to 10 seconds to stop and stare and tell Dean just how excited I was about all of it. It looks so good. How's it look? Good. Is it pretty? Yeah. What do you do if you smell paint? Blow his your nose. <laughs> Look at it, babe. It looks so good. The cabinets are pretty, even that like style. It's just so perfect. It's so pretty. We started out the next day like we do most days on a project, and that's with a trip to the hardware store. The next big project in this kitchen is the backsplash, and for that, we're going to be using these 4x8 faux brick panels. And then we went ahead and grabbed all the supplies that we would need for painting and played a little Tetris in our minivan. No, not very much at first. <laughs> Back at the house, there was a lot going on. Our drywall guys were making a lot of repairs and really exciting countertops were finally being installed. All right, so countertops are in and they look incredible. This is when it starts getting so exciting because you walk in and you're just like, ah, you're just such big changes. Today, we're gonna be working on the backsplash and we're gonna be using these faux brick panels and going all the way to the ceiling. It'll be a great budget-friendly option and hopefully we can knock out all of that today. The first step in installing this brick backsplash was of course to measure from the countertop to the ceiling. Since I'm going to be adding floating shelves on this main wall, I thought it would look so great to carry that brick all the way up to the ceiling. This actually isn't the first time I've used these brick panels and in previous projects, I figured out that the best way to conceal these seams is to cut out the little half bricks between the panels. Once I had the overall size cut, I was able to measure and mark where the outlets and switches go. I drilled a starter hole and used my jigsaw to cut out where I had marked. Once all the cuts were done, I used liquid nails and a brad nailer to attach it to the wall. required a few more trips back and forth because I was cutting around the window and the windowsill. But in general, I followed the same basic process of getting my overall size cut and then focusing on the detailed cuts, then using liquid nails and the brad nailer to attach it to the wall.
with the first couple of pieces on, you can start to see how cool this backsplash is really gonna be. And if it looks like Andrea's done this before, well, she has. We've actually used this same basic process in my music studios in the past, and it was a really cool, creative, and cost-effective way to turn a very normal room into a beautiful, professional-looking recording studio. Next, I continued cutting, gluing, and nailing, and with every piece that went up, it got more and more exciting. up in the backsplash area and as we were doing that we started looking at this wall and thinking it would look really cool just to continue it on that entire wall and also feel more realistic because it's a little bit weird to have your brick in in the middle of a wall even though we would put a little trim piece up there and we're like that's not that much more I love doing like a backsplash all the way to the ceiling because it makes it brings your eye up it's kind of like hanging your curtains high and this room it's just one more thing making this room feel so much bigger it looks so good we weren't planning on working on this part of the wall, so before we could get started, we had to move a few things out of the way. You might have noticed that on a few of these smaller seams, I didn't worry about cutting out the brick in that zigzag pattern, and that is because I'll be going back over all of this with drywall compound, and these smaller areas are gonna be much easier to conceal. Once I finished hanging all of the brick, I grabbed a huge bucket of joint compound and a six inch putty knife to apply it. I then scraped it on in a somewhat random pattern and the purpose of this is to give it that really authentic aged brick look and it also helps to cover up all of the seams. I made sure not to apply it too heavy all over because I knew I would be painting all of it white and I wanted to make sure I could still see that brick texture coming through. Our friends really love a sort of eclectic coffee shop feel and I feel like this brick backsplash really hits that nail on the head. Once Andrea finished applying the joint compound to the brick, we got the whole living room and kitchen ready for paint, but we ran into a few snags. Sorry. Thankfully, our friends were super gracious and said it wasn't that big of a deal, but here I'm gonna state the obvious and say you should definitely remove breakable items from your shelves before you try and move them. After getting all of the furniture moved out of the way, I went ahead and vacuumed all of the trim, the baseboards, the floors close to the walls, and a lot of the walls, because if you saw our awesome drywall guys hard at work, they were sanding so much of the drywall patching they had to do to the ceiling that there was dust on everything, even the vertical surfaces. I also gave all of the trim and a good portion of the walls a good cleaning with a microfiber cloth and cred cutter. After I finished wiping the trim and walls, I started masking off the cabinets, the lights, the windows, and anything else I didn't want to get overspray on because I would be spraying the ceilings. And here's where we hit our second snag, and this one was a biggie. Back in December, after hitting 100,000 subscribers, we finally broke down and got a nice new camera and lens, and that lens just got a taste of the pavement. The dog's up. Oh. 
So this is where we'll give a friendly reminder to like and subscribe to this video and help us get a new lens. Thankfully, after getting over that initial shock of damaging this brand new camera lens, my sister came through with a little afternoon pick-me-up and brought us some coffee and a couple of cute little visitors. Are you here to see mama work? You here to visit mama? After our coffee break and a few hugs, I finished masking everything off and was ready to paint. I started with a Zinser water-based stain blocking bonding primer that I sprayed on all of the trim, the windows, and a few stains that were coming through on the ceiling. Since we had so many drywall repairs on the ceiling, I went ahead and primed the entire ceiling, which meant that Dean needed to make a run for more primer. So I did exactly as I was asked, and I got one thing and one thing only. Yep. Your timing was perfect. After finishing priming the ceilings, I had just a little bit of primer left in my gun and so I went ahead and sprayed the brick. Barely enough. <laughs> Since the primer dried on all of the trim first, I went ahead and loaded up my airless paint sprayer with satin paint and gave all of the trim two solid coats of paint. After Andrew finished the first coat of paint, I thought it was time for a cookie break. Oh, where'd you get those? I found these. <laughs> Sorry, William and Andrea, we may have eaten some of your Thin Mints. After I finished spraying all of the trim, I switched my sprayer to flat paint and started spraying all of the ceilings. After just starting the living room ceilings, we needed another gallon of paint and we ended up using every last drop of those two gallons. Don't fall! <laughs> It's a little bit hard to really capture just how much better the ceilings really look, but after making a few drywall repairs and then giving all of it a fresh coat of paint, it is looking incredible and was more than worth all of the effort to do that. The next day, it was time to paint the backsplash and the walls. Now, I know there are probably a lot of you out there that are cringing as I cover up this brick, but you have to keep the end picture in mind. And once we install the wood floor and the wood floating shelves to bring in that warmth, I am really hoping that I will have convinced at least most of you that this was the right choice. You see, I've learned in situations like this over the last 10 years to just let the girl do her thing, let the artist paint their picture, and in the end, it always turns out incredible. 
Once I finished painting the brick, I started on the first coat on the kitchen and living room walls, and it is crazy what a difference paint makes. I went with one of my favorite whites, and that's Benjamin Moore's Simply White, and as I painted, it started looking like this blank canvas that was going to be perfect for all of the color and texture that we would be bringing in with the floors and the furnishings and decor. was able to jump in and help on the second and third coat and from there it went super fast. If you hadn't noticed already, as we've been working on this house and as Andrea's been painting this house, we haven't really made any effort to cover or protect the floors. And that's because we knew we had a big surprise in store for our friends in the form of brand new, beautiful flooring for their entire house. Now, Andrea has installed floors in three homes and she's more than capable of installing these floors, but we were on a bit of a time crunch and we wanted to keep making progress on this kitchen so that we could reveal it to our friends in just a few days. So we texted our go-to tile and flooring guys and they were able to do the install which freed us up to continue making progress on the kitchen. Seeing these floors go in was so exciting because it was such a dramatic change from the old white tile and it's bringing in that warmth that this space needed. And I'm not gonna lie, after all of the work we've been doing these past few weeks, it was so nice to see some progress being made when I'm not the one doing it. So as progress on the floors continued, we were able to make a trip to Target to start purchasing all of the finishing decor items for the kitchen. All right, so this is a fun day. We get to go shopping for some of the finishing touches of the kitchen and so many of you were so generous and partnered together with us and so we want to take you shopping with us while we spend some of that money on the things that we're going to get to surprise them with. We're going in there. And even better is I texted my friend Justine who is always helping me on design stuff and I help her. We work together a lot and she is meeting us here to help pick out all of the stuff we're getting. Okay. This would be cool, right? Yeah. Cool. I like shelves. Got the essentials. Yeah. I am so glad that Justine was able to come and shop with me and just help with all of the staging because especially on a bigger project like this when there are so many little details to think through, it is so helpful to have another person to be able to bounce ideas off of and just help think through all of those little details. <laughs> I wish we could give all of you one of these mugs. Just throw me a like if you know what I'm talking about right here. The next day was a big day as it was our final day to finish off this kitchen and get it ready to reveal to our friends. There's lots of goodies in here. Thanks guys. a long list of things to get done and so while they continued flooring in the back of the house I got to work on installing the toe kicks and quarter rounds to finish off the kitchen cabinets. I bought these pre-cut toe kicks at Home Depot but they were just a little bit too tall for these cabinets and so I ripped them down on the table saw to the correct height. After 
I finished nailing in all of the toe kicks, I measured and cut quarter rounds to finish off all of the edges. finished installing all of the quarter round, I came back and caulked all of the edges. You're crushing it, you got this. The caulk needed some time to dry before I could come back with touch-up paint, and so while that dried, we had an exciting trip to make. All right, what are we doing at Lowe's? Looking at appliances! Woo! Woo! Shut that door, and shut your mouth. The only problem was these appliances were huge and we don't have a truck, so we had to call on some help. You're the man, baby. You're the man, baby. Wow. We're in business. And it was definitely a huge help to have extra hands to unload these appliances. You might need a little lady help to get that free edge. It's quite the hoss. Okay. While the guys worked on bringing all of the appliances inside, Justine and I got to focus on all of the finishing touches in the kitchen. The first thing we tackled was the floating shelves. A few days ago, I cut these 2x12s down to size and gave them a good sanding. Not to be a dramatic Texan, but it is quite cold. <laughs> softer wood like pine I always use a wood conditioner before staining because it really helps avoid that blotchy look and gives a nice even stain. I then applied one coat of stain in the color Early American by Minwax and I chose this color because it was just the perfect medium tone brown with a nice rich warm color. After the stain dried, I came back and applied several coats of this clear shellac. Once the shellac was dried, these shelves were ready to be installed. I found these black metal brackets on Amazon and made sure to use a stud finder so I could screw them into the studs and then used a level to make sure my shelves were nice and level. After we had the shelves installed, Justine and I were able to tag team installing the hardware. I have so been looking forward to this day and it was so exciting to see all of these little details finally come together. I found this antique brass hardware on Amazon and I just love the super unique sort of eclectic coffee shop vibes that it has that really fits the exact style that we are going for. Once we got all of the hardware installed, I was finally able to give these cabinets a good wipe down because they had gotten quite dirty from all of the construction mess. And after that, it was really all hands on deck because we had very limited time and we were just trying to knock everything out before our friends got home. We also just want to give a huge shout out to Justine and her husband, Tyler, because they ended up spending almost the entire afternoon over here helping install appliances, install lights and staging and everything else. And there is no way we could have pulled this off without their help.
So after a month of hard work, we were finally ready to reveal this brand new kitchen to our friends. Here's the before, in case you forgot what it was like living here. Actually, I feel like I have yep. forgotten. <laughs> yes. We've made some minor upgrades. Just some minor, minor one, ones, so. yeah. <laughs> What's up with the refrigerator and the dishwasher? Well, those are those are additions. We called on our audience, on our friends, and they supplied us with the funds to get a new fridge and dishwasher. It's something like 200 people. Who have wow. given? Yeah, I was gonna say it's not, like, it's not like just a couple family members. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Dean and Andrea, yeah. Justine. So yeah, man. All of you. Okay. Wow. That's that's incredible, especially like you know for the people watching y'all and and giving, not even knowing us. That excitement's a little. Like, hey, bar stool. I was Look like, at the lights. Those, those are awesome. <laughs> there, we don't. Wow. Wow. They're yours. They're your dishes. <laughs> My dishes? They're your dishes. Your dishes. Look at the little Sophie. Look at the spoons. <laughs> this is all for you guys. It's not Everything. It's not staging material, so it's all. What? <laughs> this this is really really a bump and so much more beyond. If we, there's even a way yeah. of saying yeah, that. Yeah yeah yeah. This is the same. And the hardware. That's a nice dishwasher. It's very nice dishwasher. Yeah. Look at that. Magic! <laughs> yeah, these handles are looking so good. Aren't these nice? Yeah. Look at this. Oh, this is so Come on in. It's higher. What do you think about the kitchen? Project manager. Okay, so this week's project is going to be building a custom shelving unit on this wall. They have a ton of books, and so we thought it would be really cool to just showcase all of them on this wall, but also have a spot for a TV and a little bit of storage as well. Where are you getting the design for this again? <laughs> It's right in here. <laughs> oh, that's what I thought, yes. People want to know how my planning goes, and I'm like, usually as soon as I can figure it out in here, then I'm, <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of planning. <laughs> I started out by using a stud finder and some tape to mark the studs that I wanted to attach my vertical boards and then shelf brackets to later on. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I then used more tape to mark out the general shape of my entire design. I like to tape out my ideas like this just to make sure there's not some weird area or measurement that's not making sense that I'm missing when I write it on paper. I think that's all I need. That looks pretty dang cool. After I finalized all the details and measurements for the shelving unit, it was time to move on to the mantel. We decided to replace this old mantel, one, because our friends honestly just didn't care for it, and two, because this stain color and size isn't really doing much for this brick. I'm going to build a simpler, more modern mantel with a stain color that I feel complements the color of the brick much better. Normally, to pull off a mantle like this, there should just be a couple of screws in the top or the bottom holding it to the support, but unfortunately, whoever built this actually built it onto the support that is attached to the brick, and so the only way to remove it was to actually pull it apart. Once I had the old mantle removed, I was able to get a better idea of how wide I wanted to make the new mantle. And then once I had figured out all of my measurements and materials, we were ready to make a trip to Lowe's to get everything we needed to build this shelving unit and the new mantle. 
For the shelves, I decided to use pine two by tens and then some pine one by twos for the vertical pieces I'll be using on the wall. The real test. So the issue here is we got 12 foot boards in a van that's only about 11 and a half feet long. All right, perfect fit. We're ready. Once we were back at the house with all of our supplies, I measured out and marked exactly where I wanted those vertical one by twos to go and then wrote down all of the measurements for the shelves so I could go make all of those cuts at once. From here, it was a pretty straightforward process of measuring twice and cutting once to avoid another trip to Lowe's, and really the most difficult part was maneuvering these giant boards. When I work with dimensional lumber like this, I do like to make a fresh cut on one end and then measure after that so I have a nice clean cut on both ends of my finished piece. After I finished making all of the cuts, I gave everything a quick sanding with 150 grit sandpaper just to remove any sharp edges, splinters, and then these annoying ink stamp marks that they put on these boards. Next, it was time to stain these shelves. I started out with a quick coat of wood conditioner just to avoid any splotchy areas and give a more even consistent finish and then I stained it with Minwax stain in the color Early American. While the stain dried, it was time to start working on the mantle. I decided to build the mantle out of pine one by six boards and before I started building, I brought one of the boards inside just to get a better visual and make sure I was cutting it to the right length. For the mantle, I'm basically building a hollow box that will hopefully look like a wood beam once it's finished. I mitered the two front corner pieces where the front board meets the two side boards and then cut a top and bottom piece out of the same one by six boards. Once I had all of my cuts made, I assembled it all using wood glue and a brad nailer. You're like a genuine craftswoman, you know what I mean? For real. I then filled all of the nail holes and corners with stainable wood filler. Once the wood filler was dry, I sanded the whole thing down with 150 grit sandpaper. Before staining the mantle, I of course had to bring it inside and just make sure the size looked right. It's cool. I mean, it'll look like a piece of reclaimed wood. Good work, darling. <laughs> that looks good. Hey, what do you think about the new mantle? Judging by the wag in your tail, I'd say you're liking it, yeah? Next, it was time to set up to stain the mantle and apply top coat to all of the shelves. Got a turbo button going. Go ahead. I again applied a coat of wood conditioner first and then Minwax's stain in the color Early American. For the top coat, I decided to use Minwax's satin wipe on poly. It's really easy to apply and get a nice even finish. Plus, I have really loved the durability of this product. And with this color of stain, I'm not worried about the slight yellowing that might happen with an oil-based product like this. <laughs> While 
the top coat dried, I then cut some one by two boards that I would be attaching vertically to the wall. Well. Careful, darling. What are you looking for? I don't know. I then gave these a quick sanding just to knock off any rough corners or edges. I decided to spray paint these black instead of staining them so that they would blend in with the black metal brackets I would be using to support the shelves. While the spray paint dried, I switched back to working on the mantle. Next, I cut a 2x4 that I would secure to the bricks that I could attach the mantle to that. me around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, they have fallen off my head. I guess I can do it again. Okay, so I just wanted to stop and point out that the only reason I'm using these bolts is because they're already here and they're still really sturdy, but you can do this exact same thing and get masonry screws from any hardware store. They're usually the blue ones. They'll, they'll say what they are. And then you simply drill a pilot hole into your wood and then drill a pilot hole with a special drill bit into either the brick or the mortar in between. And then you can attach it that way. So if you don't have the bolts, it's not a big deal. To attach the mantle, I simply drilled pilot holes through the top of it and then used wood screws to secure it to the two by four. Once the mantle was installed, I was ready to attach these one by twos to the wall. I double checked again that I was attaching these right on the studs and then drilled a pilot hole and screwed these to the wall. I'll also go ahead and add that these vertical boards are more for a visual effect and don't actually add any structural support and the screws that I'll be using into the brackets are long enough to go all the way through these boards and into the studs in the wall. I found these heavy duty shelf brackets on Amazon and I'll be sure to link them in the description but I did want to point out that I used the most heavy duty version I could find where each pair holds 200 pounds. We will be adding a ton of books and I wanted to make sure it would hold all of them without any worry of them falling down eventually. Next I simply measured and marked where I wanted each bracket and then started attaching them to the 1x2s. Finally, it was time to bring in all of the shelves and this part is so fun because I'm finally getting to see this idea that's been in my head and then taped on the wall actually take shape in front of me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh my God, can I get your number maybe? Take you out. This finished out a really productive day and had me looking forward to the next day when we would get to fill these shelves and bring a couple of surprises with us that our friends didn't know about. Good work today, darling. This was a satisfying work day. Gosh, it looks so good already. It's not even done. We started off the next day by loading up a few surprises to take over to our friend's house. Santa's sleigh is ready to go. I've actually known this piece was coming for a while now, and so I built the shelves to fit perfectly around it. Thankfully, this piece came with lots of styrofoam, which made for some really fun experiments. Yo! Come down! Yes! Oh, I need yes! Perfect. <laughs> 
Once we had the sideboard set in place and all of the shelves in their final position, we were able to attach them to the brackets with screws from the underside. Once the shelves were all attached, we were able to start putting books on the shelves and there were a lot of books. Finally, we had one last huge surprise for this bookshelf wall, thanks to all of you. Let's get this bad boy out. <laughs> now that the bookshelf is all set up, we were ready to start installing their new frame TV. Unfortunately, after we got everything opened up and out, we realized our box was missing the wall mounting bracket. Thankfully, I was able to find a new bracket locally at Best Buy, so we were able to come back later and get this installed, and we'll show the actual installation in next week's video. And here is what this whole bookshelf wall looks like finished. Along with all of the furniture, we also packed up all of the decor items and the rugs and the curtains and the things that I would need to finish out this space. Let's get this anaconda in here. <laughs> Look at giant anaconda! Crank! I think we could fit a Dean in here. Yeah, for sure. You could fit a Dean in there. Get out of my way, man. <laughs> yes! Hey, we've said it once, we'll say it again. Mini it's amazing what you hey, can fit in the minivan. If we had a truck, we wouldn't be able to take everything over there today. I'm just saying. If we had a truck, this would all be in the rain. It's the beauty of the minivan. Hashtag minivan life. Let's go, baby. Oh, that's not good. So where am I sitting again? On the roof. What are we doing in it's here? It's moving day. I've literally been looking forward to this day for months. Yes. So it's literally. raining and we're committed. I'm done to get over my shoulder. I mean, I'll set you. What's up, I? What's up? Go outside in that ring. We need you in here, product manager. This is one of the larger cigars that I've ever seen. Oh my gosh! Look at the ring! We've got the anaconda. Oh, the thing is so heavy. Christ! <laughs> you are scaring the cat! You are scaring the cat! I'm sorry, Kate. So, true story on this couch, one night our whole family was out of town for a few days and I had to come back into town for one day, but we were renting our house out so I had nowhere to stay and they straight up were like, come stay at our place. So I slept on this lovely little couch and all the boys in the morning were like, what is this guy doing here? But again, they're super generous with their space so it's so much fun to get them a brand new sectional, ladies and gentlemen. You're saying there's some selfish motivation there? Oh my gosh. I am freaking out. <laughs> you need to breathe. You waited my whole life for this, man. Oh my gosh. Maybe we just move it into the dining room. Oh. <sighs> Please spin it. Dang, no. No. I'm about to just drop it. Can't and stay. How many things you can walk through Look at you, babe. I could have helped. Look at this. I'm a legend. Okay. Yep. Sturdy box. Let's open this anaconda. See what it's eaten recently. <laughs> it's just looking like a doing house. Okay. We gotta open. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? I don't have the legs for it. Ah! 
Are you okay? Man. Man. I'm gonna man. punch you. That legitimately scared me because I couldn't see you. Aiden, if you pee on that rug. Alright, we're getting suited up for round two. Hey, stop staring at the wall. Round two! Let's go get more boxes. Me eating? Yes. Oh, look at that yellow in here. Today I want to give everyone a lesson on the Ottoman Empire. Wait, wrong Ottoman. Oh my gosh, look how cool that looks in here. Bring it in. Love it so much. Oh my gosh. Give me my ottoman. Go! <laughs> After all of the furniture was in place, it was time to start adding the finishing touches. And I was having a really hard time not just stopping and staring because I have literally been dreaming of this day for months now. Oh my gosh. That even just makes that, I mean, just having that there, okay, I need to keep moving. And as if today couldn't get any better, my friend and fellow designer Justine came over to help me finish out this space. <laughs> We started by hanging curtain rods and curtains. My go-to white curtains were out of stock at Ikea, but I found these similar ones at Target and they look great in the space. Yeah, I've been working extra hard today, so I thought it was a day for one of these. Mm. Cannon, we've, we've already talked about this, buddy. You have dog food. After a quick lunch break, I started working on a collage wall that would fill the blank space on the left side of the fireplace. Shoes off. What do you think about the new fixer upper? <gasps> By the end of the day, it was all hands on deck, and our 11 year old volunteered to help steam the curtains. You're one of the best steamers I have ever seen. It's incredible. And while she was steaming the curtains, she actually came up with a pretty brilliant idea. So what if we put this picture over here? Let's see, girl. Got our little junior designer in training. Who <laughs> needs levels? That looks awesome. That looks amazing. Good work. Justine had a few surprises of her own and she brought some of these beautiful pillows and a Turkish blanket from her shop and they look so good in this space. One of the last things we had to do was to hang this frame TV. And so after a ton of hard work and a lot of surprises, we were ready to reveal this living room to our unsuspecting friends. Oh yeah. You remember what it yep. looks like? One day you'll yep. probably forget. <laughs>
Cheers. <laughs> okay, we might do shock well. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, so sweet. It's beautiful. Man. Oh my Don't God. Get it. <laughs> oh, man. Man. I think I was more excited about this than the kitchen. Today we were like, this I feel is like so this, good. It totally feels different. Like everything yeah. about it yep. is different. Dude! That yes. chair is That chair is awesome. This and my, is all four of our kids are in it. <laughs> Let me just get over. Oh man, come on, come on Nate! Come on! Both come on! Here. This is a Turkish handmade organic <laughs> cotton. This was handmade in Argentina. I was working with the people who hand make these wow. and they like they put them on a loom and they loom them and they hand dye them. Really nice and really quality. <laughs> I'm but y'all can like all fit. No, and that chair. Oh, this is yeah, that is like the coziest the comfiest chair. chair I think we've ever seen. And the cool. television. I yeah. I and the books. It, it's okay. And the bookshelf. Oh, yeah. I do. It looks yes. good. I know. I know. I went. I was so like, nice. I'm doing it, and I'm getting the red rug because I just think it's <laughs> weird. So oh, like, man, thank you, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> man. I keep telling people, I'm living a dream. <laughs> I don't know that this is really happening. I still like am in my kitchen. And I'm like this. It just feels. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Is that plant real? Or is that fake? It's real. It's is real. that it's a real plant? It's a real plant. All of these what? Are real. So plants and trees, yeah, man. That's that's the only that's my thing. And that one's right. fake up there. This is so nice. Which one? All right. So the frame TV was another gift from our audience. They did a lot of stuff in the kitchen too, and now they came through with the frame TV. So. You can tell them thank you for Yes, them. thank you so much. Thank Our you. minds are blown. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh. 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 you. Oh. Oh. Hey, buddy. Oh. 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 Thank you. Beautiful. Dinner with all, all of y'all. <laughs> Work in this room actually started several weeks ago when William pulled out the old laminate flooring so that we could have the same vinyl planks that we use in the rest of this house continued into this space as well. Today I'm starting on the main feature of this space and that is a custom built-in banquette. I started by measuring and then taping out my measurements to get a good visual and make sure it looked okay and then sketching out my plans so I could get a good materials list. <laughs> Okay, so we got all of our measurements, materials list ready, so we're running to Home Depot to buy all of the wood so we can get these benches built. And we have a couple of extra cute little helpers with us today. <laughs> all right. There's the man, now we're ready. Once we got back from Home Depot, we actually had another job that we had to take care of. That's good, it's good. You might have noticed that we've actually had two fridges in this house for a while, and that's because the door style on the original fridge wouldn't allow the doors to open all the way as they were up against a wall. We're out. So our friend Tyler was gracious enough to come again with his truck and help us load this thing up and take it back. And just for the record, moving a refrigerator is no easy task. Look at that, though. Ask it a look. Ah, get off it! Easy peasy, man. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Look manly. Yeah. Yeah. While the guys were returning the refrigerator, I got started building the framework for the built-in benches out of 2x4s. Once I had all of the 2x4s cut to length, I had quite a few pocket holes to drill. What are you doing now? Assembling. You look really excited about it. <laughs> Next, it was time to start assembling the framework and I found a large clamp to be extremely helpful when doing this. I'll also go ahead and point out that I decided to turn my two by fours this way and assemble them using pocket holes because these benches will actually open up and this will give them maximum storage space on the inside.
finished assembling the first bench, I repeated the same process for the second one that would complete the other side of the L. Once I had all of the 2x4 framework finished, it was time to make this look a little bit prettier. First, I covered all of the sides with quarter inch plywood. I then added trim using pre-primed 1x5s for the baseboard piece and then pre-primed 1x3s for all of the rest. You know what's happening to your hair? It's blowing all over the place. Blowing in the wind. <laughs> As is the case with most projects, we weren't actually able to finish this in a day, so we did a quick cleanup and then came back the next day ready to make more progress. The next morning it was raining and so we decided to start work inside and then would finish up the rest of the build when the weather cleared up. Oh, sorry. Just oh. run me into the light, why don't you? Get a little morning cross fit in. Wow, that looks so cool. So we're gonna do a board and batten in here that's gonna go up behind the built-in bench, but then continue around the room. Normally, I'd probably go like about this height, but we're gonna have these back cushions that match the bench cushions that are gonna hang probably about here. And I want them to hang off of my top board for my board and batten. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what makes sense that doesn't look funny. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna go just a couple inches below this window. I don't want it too close and I definitely don't want it touching because I want to be able to hang something off of it. Just bringing everything in here helps me just get a good visual on it and make sure I don't regret my choice later. <laughs> Once I had figured out and then measured and marked where I wanted my board and batten to go, we started getting the room ready to paint. Oh, watch that. <laughs> I've actually found it's easier to paint before installing all of the board and batten because a big flat wall is easier to roll. Our friends love the color yellow and so for the top portion of the wall above the board and batten, I'll be using this beautiful yellow color that my friend Justine has used in her house and it is Perfect for this space. Oh, okay. we'll see. Is that a pineapple smoothie? <laughs> in painting walls, I like to cut in first around the edges with a brush and then roll. And with this paint, I ended up needing two coats to get a good solid coverage. just how light that yellow was. I was feeling like mustard today. <laughs> it looks good. Yes. I feel like I really want it's a, a corn little, dog. A little different. I know. I don't know why. After a quick lunch break, I started rolling the white paint on the bottom portion of the wall where the board and batten would go. No, Cannon. There's paint in here. Paint and puppy paws do not mix. I'm sorry, buddy. This is the same white we used in the rest of the house, which is one of my favorite whites, Benjamin Moore Simply White. It's looking so good in here. I love the mustard and mayonnaise colors that you have. Those are perfect. Thankfully, by the time I finished painting, the weather had cleared up and we were ready to finish building the benches. You're so strong. Woo! Gosh, this thing's so heavy. I started out by finishing up the trim on the second bench and to attach all of those boards, I used liquid nails and then a brad nailer. filled in all of the nail holes and cracks with a wood filler. Wow, 
while the wood filler dried, I started installing all of the board and batten. <laughs> For all of these top horizontal pieces, I used pre-prime 1x4s and I went around with a stud finder making sure that I was nailing into the studs. I continued the same process around the room using my level to make sure everything was nice and level. What are you smiling about over there? Just measure the wall and quit messing around. Hey. Looks smoking good, just like you. I went ahead and pulled all of the old baseboards out because I'll be using primed one by fives as the bottom of my board and batten and that will also act as a baseboard. By this time, the wood filler on the benches was dried and so I gave it a quick sanding and then blew everything off. Finally, we were ready to bring the benches in and they are looking so good in the space. Oh, Do you look at this? Would you just look at it? I went ahead and attached the benches to the wall using wood screws. Dude, what is going on in here? It sounds like machine gun. Take a chill pill. Once the benches were installed, I started measuring and cutting pre-primed 1x5s that would act as the baseboard and the bottom of the board and batten. Okay. Before we finished for the day, I went ahead and added a second coat of white paint to the walls and then the first coat of paint to the built-in benches. The first task of the day was to measure and cut all of the vertical boards for the board and batten. For this, I used pre-primed 1x2s and spaced them about 18 inches apart. You know. Hey, what are you doing? Got the paparazzi following me. At this point in the project, I was starting to get so excited because I was really seeing that vision that was in my head come to life. Once I had all of the vertical boards in, I caulked all of the edges and then went back with a damp rag to wipe off the excess caulk. After the board and batten was finished, I was ready to measure and cut the plywood for the top of the benches. What you got there? Mattress topper, taking a nap. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> taking a nap. Yeah. Did you just slap my butt when you walked by? No man, dreaming. For the cushions, I ended up using a two inch memory foam mattress topper as this ended up being cheaper than buying the foam from the fabric or craft store. Dude, it literally smells like confetti cake, doesn't it? So weird, it smells just like confetti cake. Your nose is broken. Wait, never mind. That's this yogurt. I was sitting right here. I was like, it smells was just like, like confetti cake. That's because my nose is right over this. Wow, that smells good. There are a lot of different ways you could go about making cushions for a bench seat like this, but rather than making an actual separate cushion, I decided to attach it directly to the plywood so the entire thing would lift up in one piece. For the cushion covers, I went with this faux leather that I picked up at Joann's. After cutting the foam to size, I was able to lay everything out, cut the leather to size, and then use my stapler to attach it to the plywood. Mm -hmm. 
Sweet. You got this, babe. When upholstering a bench seat in this way, I found it's helpful if you add a couple of staples in the middle that are opposite each other and then work out from there, pulling just tight enough to get out any wrinkles, but not so tight that you're going to see all of the inconsistencies and lumps when you finish. What a looker. Looking good. After I finished the seat cushions, I repeated the same process for the backrest cushions. Corn dog for you. What? Corn dog for you. Oh, it came out of its sheath. Okay, it's like, where's mine? Okay, so I'm making these back cushions that are actually gonna hang from this top rail. I have one cushion finished. I'm gonna show you real quick how I did it. Basically, I'm using this, what's called belt strapping. I ended up picking up it at Walmart because Joanne's was out. But most craft stores will have it. Just use my stapler. That should be plenty strong. And I'm gonna put some screws to hold these on, like so. Looking good. I also picked up these little antique brass D-rings. They're the size that fits this one inch belt strapping. So it's not um, stretchy. Is it all good? Mm -hmm. Once I finished all of the cushions, I took all of them out so we could do the final coat of white paint. At this point, we were running really short on time because our friends would be home in just a couple of hours, and so Dean grabbed a paintbrush and jumped in with me so we could get this done. It's such an honor to carry the world's largest cutting board. While the paint dried, I worked on assembling this beautiful new dining room table. I also decided to go ahead and take down the old light fixture and replace it with a flush mount that didn't hang down at all. I switched the light for a few reasons. One, because I didn't like the way it hung down in front of the window. Two, because with adding these built-in benches, the table would no longer be centered, which would mean that pendant light hanging down would not be centered over the table. And three, removing this light made this room feel much more open. Before we started bringing furniture and all of the finishing touches into this room, we did a quick cleanup. Next, I was able to frame and then hang up this artwork. I love the fun pop of color that these prints add to this room. Finally, we were able to bring in the new dining table, the bench cushions, and the back cushions, and it is starting to look so good in here. We finished out the space with new dining chairs, a plant, and a vase on the table, and we were finally ready to surprise our friends with their brand new dining room. Okay, the rest of the house is a mess, but the dining room looks insane. Okay, they're like waiting in the driveway. This is how every reveal day goes. We're like scrambling, we're like, oh, I can get done this time. It's like an hour later. We're like, sorry guys, you can come in now. And that's why it's always a mess in the background. We don't get to do this that many more times. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, God. Thank you, Davises, and just yeah. everybody, man. This is like a lifetime of Thanksgiving, right? Here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be singing "Amazing Grace" like every other day. 
My overall plan for the pantry is to have one long wall of floating shelves with a coffee bar down at the end that has a fun wallpaper behind it. First, I brought in the wallpaper so I could pick out the perfect paint color to go with it. Next, it was time to grab some trim and we had to cut these bad boys down so they would actually fit in our mini bin. And finally, we grabbed some 2x12s that we'll use for the main shelving and we loaded everything up. You're not doing that right. <laughs> I'm about to show you what I'm all about. I kind of like this whole cameraman thing. No wonder you're always goofing around. You're getting bored holding the camera. That's easy peasy, man. Feel like I want to do something silly. No, it's not really easy. Good job, babe. Good job. Step one of this pantry makeover will be painting this entire room and so I started by giving the walls a good wipe down and then sweeping the floors. Next I went ahead and masked off the ceiling because I am going to be spraying this entire room and as always this part takes a lot longer than you think it would. This looks like one of the more exciting jobs. I love tedious jobs that have a tendency to be frustrating, like where the tape sticks to the plastic when you don't want it to. <laughs> How can we make paint prep exciting? Hire it out. I was thinking maybe like paint prep dance party. Sorry, I was just trying to make paint prep more exciting because guess what? It's boring! There's no way around it. All right, you're all done? All done. <laughs> Next, we unloaded all of our supplies out of the van. I feel like a pirate plank distributor or something like that. Yard, welcome to Pirate Pete's Planks. We got any kind of planks. Paint get, suits coming get the back suit out. On. Would you look at it? <laughs> look at what? <laughs> the paint color. It's green and it's beautiful. I really want to spray this so bad. After getting my paint sprayer set up, we took everything inside and got ready to paint. Matt, doctor. Thanks. I'm going in for surgery. I went with the color Alpine Trail by Bear and it complements the wallpaper perfectly and I really love that you're gonna get this fun pop of color that you can see from all the other living spaces. All right, I'm closing you in. So you can't exactly take a nice camera inside of a small room being painted, but that's okay because you get to spend some extra quality time with me, and I know that's what you want right now. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna go Okay, so I got way too carried away. Jeez, that hurt. Just got a little elbow scrape. No big deal. A little hand scrape, a little head bonk. Ow, but dude, we're fine. We're good. No big deal. Let's act like that didn't happen. All right, how was it in there? Great. Paint sprayer is fast and efficient. That's your kind of stuff. That's style. my kind of thing. Yeah. When the paint dries, you just kind of lounge around, I guess. There's not a lot well, to not do. Not always, but today. I'm glad we kept, they kept this old couch for us in the garage. Except it faces out, and there have been times where we're both sitting here, like, taking a break, and so many heads are turning. And just look. I can see their heads, like, turning backwards. As they, like, what are they doing? Hey, Fred. <laughs> Good to see you. We're just relaxing here on our garage couch. No big deal. After spraying the second coat and giving it a little time to dry, I went ahead and pulled off all of the plastic. And not to repeat myself too many times, but it is crazy what a difference just paint makes. 
How dreamy. This is the perfect space for a fun color though. You know, dining room, pantry, a laundry room. Those are good spaces to do a fun color. So you may not want to do like your whole living room. Okay, so I'm done painting and we're actually gonna call it quits for the day so this can dry. We'll come back tomorrow. We're gonna float the floor so we continue the laminate in here. It's looking really good. It's cool. I love pops of color like this and like dark colors and bright colors, whatever color. Okay, so I'm back in the pantry and unfortunately I had to come without Dean today. He's finishing up some editing. But I am going to be installing wallpaper. And if this looks familiar, it's because it's the same print that we used in our closet at our house. If you saw that video, it's just the darker version of it. And since I saw this wallpaper, I have loved it. And I think it'll just be so fun. Like you'll get a good peek of it from the kitchen, but it's not like, you know, in a main space, so it's not overwhelming. But I'm gonna be following the same steps that I did in our closet. Real quick, I thought I'd give you a little close up of what I'm using. And again, it's just this massive four inch brush that I had on hand, probably like for painting fences or something like that, but it picks up a lot of product, makes it really easy to get it on. It doesn't splatter like a roller. I prefer this, I like it. And then I'm using this that I found at Lowe's. It was the only option. It worked great when we use it in our closet. And so I've been happy with it and I still have some leftover, so that's cool. I'm just making sure I pushed record. <laughs> Hey, what do y'all think about it? Um, How's it feel? Good. Hey, what's your mom gonna do when she sees it? Cry. She's gonna cry. It um, looks good. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm pretending to be daddy. We don't have a videographer here today. It's looking so good though. It looks awesome. I'm gonna float this entryway real quick into the pantry. And we're like, we have enough of the vinyl planks left over, so we're just gonna continue that in here. But so I don't have to do a transition piece, I'm gonna actually float the floor down because it's about a half inch higher in the part that's already finished. So if you do a gradual float like that, you can actually continue laying your floor without having to use one of those T-strips as a transition. I've got a nice gradual slope, so you won't even, probably won't even feel it because it was such a small amount. All right, we'll let this dry. Also. I'm at the house with a four and five year old. What are the chances that I can keep this free from little footprints or donkey prints? Hopefully. After finishing up the wallpaper and floating the floor, I went outside to start sanding and staining the shelves. Thankfully, while I was in the middle of sanding, Dean got back and relieved me of my cameraman duties. Hey, Dean's back! We've been editing hard, but hopefully you guys will enjoy it. By the time you see this, they'll have watched the video that you just edited. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Tell me what you think about the last video, because <laughs> I'm liking it. Get the cameraman back on. <laughs> Like always, when I stain pine, I start out with this pre-stained wood conditioner because it really helps avoid a streaky finish. After that, I stain the shelves in the same color that I used in the rest of the house, Minwax's Early American. By the time I finished staining the shelves, it was time to pick the kids up from school for the weekend, which made this the perfect stopping point for this week's work. All right, so we're at the start of week two of this pantry project, and before we get over there and get started, we've gotta grab a couple of things inside Lowe's. I grabbed more stain, a top coat to use for all of the wood shelves, a board to use for the microwave shelf, and some trim for the doorway leading into the pantry. Once we had everything we needed, we headed to the house where a little surprise was waiting for us. Let's get in there. And let's get to work. All right, I'm ready. Also, I'm at the house with a four and five year old. What are the chances that I can keep this free from little footprints or donkey prints? Hopefully. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got some animal prints. You know how I had that brilliant idea of buying the pre-mixed floor float to save myself time? I missed that it takes like 
100 times as long to dry and so now we have animal prints and like you know when they step in it goes up and so we definitely need to refloat it <laughs> so that our floor can lay flat and not be all wonky so Dean's gonna go get the correct stuff it'll dry super fast you can actually even lay flooring within an hour on it <sighs> it's okay for the top coat on these shelves, I use a clear shellac spray and this stuff dries so fast that they will be ready to install and put stuff on by the end of the day. Next, I grab this 18 by 24 inch board that I picked up at Lowe's and sanded and then painted it black. I also went ahead and spray painted the brackets for this shelf as well because white was the only option available at the store. Let's be honest, I'm not very comfortable with finding things in Lowe's yet like Andrea is, but we're gonna do our best here today, guys. We're gonna do our best. Ladies and gentlemen, a miracle is taking place. He has found the floor float. All right, so the overall mission was a success, uh, but it wasn't until I got here in the car that I realized the first floor float bag that I picked up uh, had a leak in it. So I am currently covered in floor float, but that's all right. We got what we needed and we're ready to get started again. Once Dean got back, we mixed up the floor patch and did a quick second coat. Mmm, cake. <laughs> Man, you're such a pro. <laughs> Obviously, that's why I'm doing this round too. While we waited on the floor patch to dry, we went ahead and cleaned up the space to get ready to install floors. Patience, young Jedi. Once the floor float was dry to the touch and hard enough to walk on, we were finally able to start installing the floors. We continued the same vinyl plank flooring that we used in the rest of the house, and I was able to install most of it using only a jigsaw and a utility knife. What a pro. What a pro. Once I got through installing the doorway, I was able to finish out the rest of this space pretty quickly. This is a multi-tool and it is one of those tools that I didn't know just how useful it was until I had it and now I feel like I use it for all sorts of random projects, but this is the most obvious and big one is undercutting the trim pieces like around a doorway so that your flooring can slide under and you don't see like your cut mark around the door. These are the best, like for real. Is that it? You done? Uh, yes. Wow, that's Finally. awesome. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> done with flooring. Okay, so we are done for the day. We'll come back tomorrow and do baseboards and all the trim, the cased opening here, start putting shelves up, maybe start actually organizing, but I tend to be over optimistic in what we can do in a day. So we'll see. We, we might need another two days. <laughs> Onward! We're so close and it's looking so good. I feel like once I get past all the trim stuff, then it's the fun part. The next day, we actually started work at our house. I'll be using my Cricut machine to make a really cool custom coffee bar menu that will go at the coffee station at the end of the pantry. I started by sanding a scrap piece of plywood. I then painted it using flat black spray paint because I wanted it to have a sort of chalkboard look when it was finished. While the paint dried, it was time to start designing and then cutting the vinyl for this custom menu. Once the vinyl was cut, I grabbed a couple of my favorite tools and started weeding out all of the excess. And you'll see later that I'm actually wanting to use this vinyl as a stencil and so that is why I'm weeding out the words that I actually want to see. Next, I applied the transfer paper, pressed it down really good, then I peeled the vinyl off of the backing paper and lined it up on the board where I wanted it to go and pressed it down. 
Once the vinyl was pressed down really well, I simply pulled off the transfer paper and then was ready to paint. I used white spray paint because again, I'm wanting this to look like a chalkboard when I'm finished. Once the paint was dried, I pulled off all of the excess vinyl and the last thing I did was build a simple frame out of some scrap wood I found in our garage. In the end, I love how this little coffee menu turned out and I think it's going to add the perfect, unique, and personal touch to the coffee bar area. After we finished the custom coffee sign, we headed back over to our friend's house to hopefully get the entire pantry finished and ready to reveal by the end of the day. What's first? I think, well, what do you call it? Hang the shelves? Install the shelves? We'll do that first because it's raining again outside. And then I need to put baseboards in and frame this opening. Yeah, you got this. Let's do it. We can do it. The first thing I needed to do was to figure out where I wanted to hang the shelves. That seems good, doesn't it? Yeah. If we figured out 13 inches between was a good height and then I have a little bit more space on the very top, a little bit more space on the very bottom. Once I figured out the height for the shelves, I started attaching these brackets that I found on Amazon. After I installed the first bracket, I got Dean's help to make sure the shelf was level while I installed the bracket on the other end. Temporary bracket. Are you good holding that there? Yep. Oh my gosh, my arms are hurt. Well, okay. I'll give you my number so that if you ever need help <laughs> leveling boards again, you can you can call me, okay? May I consider it. Aww. The name of my business is uh, Handsome Helping Hands. <laughs> Once we had the first shelf level, I continued installing brackets and this was quite an arm workout. I can't do this. On to shelf number two. Yep, hopefully this one is a little bit easier. What are you doing with that board? Getting a little, a little bit smarter. I uh, see. Okay, so I've got to add one little shelf right here for the microwave because it's a lot deeper than these 12 inch shelves. So I have a special board with larger brackets that I'm going to attach. It's going to go over here on this side because it has a really short cord and there's an outlet right here on this wall. So we got to keep it right by it. <laughs> it fits. It's looking good. Hopefully that answered all of you that were really concerned about where their microwave is. They do have a microwave. We didn't make them throw it away. After installing the microwave, we continued installing the shelves and it was starting to look so good in here. Would you look at this? <laughs> Would you just look at it? I am looking at it. It's all you really can do. It looks amazing, actually. Sure, I do love it when things start looking better than they did in my head. <laughs> Andrea's really gonna cry about this. This is probably like on par with living room furniture. <laughs> I think I do shock well. This is amazing. <laughs> Having a pantry, like as a mom, that's a big deal, man. The DIY wife, making dream pantries happen. <laughs> After that, I might have gotten a little ahead of myself and started placing things on the shelves before I even attached them to the brackets. Wait, what? Honey bunches of oats? Give me some of that. Are you really gonna eat some of those? Well, we're redoing their pantry and I thought that is the perfect time for a pantry raid. <laughs> we're redoing the pantry, not, not raiding the pantry. Whatever, Frank Never. I'm telling on you. What next? I just want to stare at it, but I need to finish it. Gosh, it's like a sauna out here. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> oh, could you go like six inches the other way? Is this good? Back up a little bit. Like, no, 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 back the other way. Is this good, you goon? <laughs> I'm still thinking. Just kidding, good job, that's perfect. Once I got myself back on track, I cut down the last shelf, which needed to be a little bit shorter because of the microwave. Hey, show them the door trick. 
There it is. You have, You're to, get in. The, you have to get this one kind of hard. No ice. That looks so good. I'm standing right in your way because you need to get to work. Stop looking I at can't. it. I can't. I can't. Okay. Dang it. I don't want to. I don't want to work. I just want to make it look pretty. I feel like the new shelving units look a little bit better than the old ones. Do you think? Just a little bit. After lining all of the shelves up where I wanted them, I started attaching the shelves to the bracket. Oh, wait, what? Do you have ruffles? Oh, gosh. All right, so Andrew has hired my help, which means we're gonna need two screws, one screwdriver, and the ruffles. Let's get started. You are the worst helper ever! <laughs> I'm a pro. Where did that screw go? Welcome to DIY Dean. Showing you how to get projects done. In and really timely fashion. Pro, call me Andrea. One screw, two chips. Two screws, four chips. Yes. Once I got that first bracket out of the way, I went a little bit faster and finished attaching the boards to the brackets. Hey, I've been thinking about how to make screwing screws in a lot more exciting. <laughs> Is that why you're going like at an angle like that? <laughs> Screw dance party. <laughs> After all of the shelves were attached, I started working on adding trim to this doorway. There used to be an actual door here, which they removed, and so we're adding trim to make it a cased opening. Let me get that for you, darling. Thanks. Come on in. Oh, you're a pro. Such a pro. So before Dean goes to pick up our kids, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the baseboard so he can help me move in our cabinet for the coffee bar. And these I painted when I painted the walls. They're just a little bit dirty, but I'll wipe them off after I install them. Let's go, let's go. but the people at home probably can't see it at all right now. <laughs> Next, I added this runner that I found at Target and I love what it adds to this space. After that, I was finally ready to start putting things on the shelves. I actually came by the evening before and worked with our friend Andrea to organize all of their pantry goods into these bins and baskets that I picked up at Target. After getting all of the bins on the shelves where I wanted them, I had one last DIY project to tackle. All right, Dean's going to pick up the kids. I'm gonna see if I can put these labels on there. I made these with the Cricut too. They're on removable vinyl. I love using this stuff. But my idea with this is I like the clear bins because they're really easy to clean. These, we're putting foods that aren't going to be so messy. So these are pretty but still functional, but mostly using the plastic ones. But I want to kind of put something on the front to cover up a little bit of the chaotic look, but also you can still see through the side. So it's really easy to see what's in your boxes and also we'll have labels. About the time that Andrea was finishing up with the labels, I got back from picking up the kids from school with some candy in tow. Can I have them? Mm -hmm. Thanks. It's true love, giving up your Swedish oh, fish for your mom. Right Man, look at this spread. I see hunting went well today. So how many pieces are y'all gonna give daddy? After a quick candy break, I was ready to add all the finishing touches to this pantry. After setting up
up the coffee bar, I caulked around all of the trim and added to the cased opening. I got it. Next, it was a race to the finish line because our friends were going to be home any minute. We finished just in the nick of time and we're ready to show our friends their new pantry space. There you go. Hide the eyes. Hide the eyes. Well, man, how amazing does this house look? And when you think about where this house came from and how it's been transformed, I mean, it is literally just a totally different space. So let's just break it down room by room. We started with the kitchen. We spent several weeks in there. The before is old, it's dark, it's outdated. Then you switch to the new kitchen. It has beautiful colors. It just so fits their style. Then we move into the living room. Kind of the same story, a little bit outdated, a little bit dark, and this space just looks yeah. unbelievable. Then you move into the dining room. You have this incredible design for it. Transform the space. It looks so gorgeous. It looks like a designer room. And then lastly, we move into the pantry. It was this blank space, this blank canvas, and you just made it into something absolutely gorgeous. So all of the main living spaces of their house are completely transformed. And I think their reactions to the space show how much it really meant to them. But all in all, it's just, man, it's looking so good. And I'm so glad that we got to do this for our friends. It's just like such a cool opportunity. Yeah, and not only does it all look beautiful, but a lot of it functions a lot yeah. better for their family and I love that we, I feel like we really just infuse their house with their style and yeah. their personalities. We spent a lot of time really trying to draw that out of them and figure out what they liked and so this is specific to them, to their family and in so many ways I feel like we nailed it and it's so fun to step back and be able to look at that entire space and all of it together now and just see the finished results and I love it. They love it. I love yeah, it. It was awesome. fun. It's so cool to be able to like bless our friends and it's exciting.